was interesting is that a friend of mine, uh, Peter Barsoom, the owner of a company that um, uh, hires, uh, employs primarily women, uh, said that the COVID-19 had disproportionately impacted women. Mm -hmm. Because women who have careers have developed a support system, you know, from childcare to housekeeping to allow them to thrive mm -hmm. in and focus on their careers. And suddenly that support system is stripped away. And uh, particularly for single women and single, single mothers and family breadwinners, they're particularly vulnerable as the, the whole burden, uh, you know, solely rely on them, you know? Yeah. So um, it's really the concern of the loss of uh, this loss uh, of access to resources that, you know, makes us who we are, you know, uh, you know, good mothers, uh, good, good wives, uh, uh, good partners, but at the same time, uh, these women who are carrying these incredible careers. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pressure, I think. And I, you know, one of the things that I brought up with you, Yasmina, is I think about it in terms of the work that I do. And, you know, a lot of what people try to figure out in therapy is how do they ask for what they want and need. And so what I was particularly interested in with this topic um, was women who are married or have partners, men or women, um, are they able to ask to divide up the responsibilities and the labor, you know, that goes along with that? which is really, you know, um, I think, you know, it's, it's always a topic in the papers. You read about this a lot, about the division of labor in a family. And, and now, as you were saying, um, particularly with women in the workforce now, how does that work? And are women able to ask for what they need? So there's the, you know, there are women that have partners, there are women who are single and parenting, and then they have to do their jobs at home. It's a tremendous pressure. A tremendous. I was uh, interested when you said that uh, mostly uh, uh, people who go to therapy are uh, women. Yes. Yes, I, I think. I, thought, I, I, I would have never thought about it mm -hmm. that, that way. So um, do you think that um, this helps them? Um, you know, fa facing the, uh, the challenges and the difficulties? Yes, and women talk about this. Um, Somebody women, is saying this is why there is so much talk of divorce during yeah. the COVID. It really brings, it yeah, it really brings things to the surface within a relationship. And a lot of what I, you know, women deal with in my practice that they talk about is this very issue. And now, <laughs> it's really, you know, it's it's so um, the pressure is so great because we're stuck in home, you know, in our homes with each other. And um, women talk about this, you know, even outside of Corona, out of COVID-19, they, they talk about this issue of, you know, I feel like I, I feel guilty when I ask him to, you know, to, to pitch in or to pitch in more, or, you know, so this is, this is something that women talk about a lot. And yes, women are the predominant um, clientele that I deal with. I mean, men come to therapy too, but it's disproportionately women that come into my practice. And they're talking about these issues of how, and it's not just with men. I don't, I don't want to just target men. Yeah. They are talking about issues of how do I speak up? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean to speak up? And, you know, how do I put myself out there in a way that I'm getting what I want and what I need? Mm -hmm. A lot of people struggle with this, men included. Men just have not been conditioned to talk about these things. You know, it's, it's typical um, that men would shut it down or they wouldn't think about it or, and it would come out in other ways, you know, the pressure. So, yeah. So how do you, you know, there's two topics here, I, I suppose. There are two populations. There, there are the single women that are having to deal with this and they don't have the help that they need. And exactly. that's, so it's just, you mm. know, that's incredible pressure. I just can't. Interesting comments. Thank you for participating. 
um, women yes. and then mood women socialize that way. You know, women are more socialized to be emotional and to show their emotion. And it's more typical for women. Uh, men, and it's, it's unfair to, to boys and then men that they're not conditioned in this way that they can share because they feel the pressures too in different ways. And then they don't know how to speak it. You know, they, they don't know how to put it into words. And, and women have a hard time a hard enough time with this. Everyone has a hard time with this, mm -hmm. but it seems like it's more okay for women to talk about it with other women, with their therapist, whomever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the same time, they are more, um, pro uh, you know, disproportionately impacted, but I feel they are also somehow more prepared for the challenge. You know, it's like there is these two things. It's like, you know, it's hitting them harder, particularly uh, single mothers and, and family breadwinners. Uh, but at the same time, are they more prepared? Are they, you know, are they taking the challenges and, and, and you know, growing as a human being and dealing, facing with everything? That's an interesting notion. It depends on how you, I suppose it depends on how you look at it. I think it depends on where it's coming from. If a, a woman is afraid to speak up because it's going to cause friction, you know, they, you know, whatever, you know, it, it could lead to divorce. It, it depends on, you know, how, you know, what's going on in your relationship. But for whatever reason, if they are afraid to speak up, that doesn't mean that they are emotionally better equipped. I, you know, they just do it. Mm. So maybe in some ways they are, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. So it can be both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, they might be more because they've had to do it or maybe mm -hmm. they haven't had to do it, but they have taken on the responsibility of doing everything. Mm -hmm. multitasking and, and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll hear often women feeling resentful about this. So yes, maybe they're better equipped, but should they be? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And also, you know, since feminism, women have been working almost like men, you know, equally putting themselves out there and and uh, focusing on their careers and, and, you know, trying to share responsibilities at home. And uh, so, so I feel it's, it's um, I mean, they are prepared, but at the same time, I mean, they're the, they have their careers, you know, to pursue as well, right. you know? Yeah. So. I thought it was, I, I mean, when you told me about your friend who has this company, I thought it was, I, I I like that he noticed, <laughs> you know, that he was actually having a conversation with you about it, that he was concerned for his employees, his women employees that were, you know, under this tremendous amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I mean, I mean, I can't imagine being in a home. I mean, my son is 15. He's very self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So I don't have that pressure. You know, it, 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 he's just doing his thing. He's working it out. Um, he's not one of these teens that's fighting to get out of the house. So I don't have those issues to deal with. But I imagine, I mean, if you have one, two or three children or more, I suppose it's not as typical, but in elementary school yeah. and you are having to um, deal with their schoolwork, you know, keeping them organized and then you're having to do your work. I cannot imagine the pressure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I cannot imagine or even to have toddlers do you know it's just it's it's hard it's, to imagine it's yeah it's very tough um I have this uh, uh question is um to you as a psychoanalyst how do you feel that our behavior in this time will determine how we will grow and change as women um, I think with all of these pressures aside, these are real issues that women are dealing with and, you know, having to parent and do their job and whatnot. If it's possible for them to be reflective, it is a great time in many ways 
to reflect on themselves and how they interact, you know, with their significant other or the world or, you know, what is it that they want and need in their life? And so it's a, it's a perfect time in many ways to just kind of uh, downshift if, if they can, if they can take that time and really go internal, really go internal and really um, self-reflect and think about, you know, what is it that I want in my life? What is it that I need? What is it that I want in my relationship? What is it that I need? And I saw a comment earlier Pierre had made about how, you know, women are more geared. They just want to talk. They don't, they're not looking for a resolution. They're not looking for a fix. And, and I, I agree with that. But even then, it's hard for women to express themselves oftentimes. And again, I think everyone can have this issue with expressing themselves. It's our topic is women right now. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a huge issue for a lot of people is really saying what they want, what they need. It's, it's more, I think, socially acceptable, particularly in the workplace, for men to ask for what they want and for what they need. You know, they're more, and, and you know, it's just that we hear about this and read about this all the time. If a woman puts out what she wants or needs, she's, you know, she's categorized as a, a bitch. <laughs> Or, tough, or, you know, it, there's some way that she gets characterized, whereas men don't get characterized as anything. This is just who they are. So it really, um, I think that this is a time that you can really sit and reflect and, and really think about what, what is it that I need to do in my life so that I have the feeling within myself, regardless of who I'm with and where I am, that I have the feeling within myself, I can say what I want to say. And I don't have to have this chatter of I'm, you know, characterized this way or this way, or people think this or, you know, focusing outside of myself to determine how I feel about myself inside mm -hmm. is basically what I'm saying. This is a problem for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you really see it um, with women. And I think you really see it, it, it really manifests in the workplace. So do you think it's a, a good time to start um, seeing a psychotherapist or psychotherapist? I think, I think it's always think a it's... good time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always a good time to embark on the therapy, you know, adventure. Um, but this is a really great time for, for a couple of reasons. For, you know, if you don't have all of these pressures, you have the time. If you do have all of these pressures, you need the support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So both ways it works. So both ways, right? I mean. Yeah, if you're, single, um, if you're a single person and, you know, and you're lonely and, and uh, by the way, talking about this, there is this uh, quote that I love from Lacan, the, uh, the French uh, psychiatrist who passed away. And Lacan, he said that. Yes, Lacan. He said the best remedy to counteract the feeling of loneliness is a good relationship with our unconscious. Yes. So it's, you know, it's... it's know yourself. It's what you say, you know, it's, it, it helps you. Yes, it's, yeah. I, I'm seeing a comment here from... Um, so Pierre says, often we just do it, and this is Life Essence Tribe, often we just do it rather than argue. And then I jumped down to uh, AccuGirl, Erica, who said, women are natural multitaskers and we do tasks more efficient. So I think we like to do everything, but then it gets too much sometimes. Yes. I think we are, I don't know if we're natural multitaskers. I think it's just what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we just go into a mode that we just do it. And you're right, it does get too much. And we're not really thinking about, you know, could this task go to this person or this person? Or, you know, can my husband take over or my partner or someone in the workplace? Um, so I think that we become natural at it because we think we have to do it. So, so you think we, we still, uh, even with emancipation, we still, you know, tough with ourselves. Oh, my gosh. About, yes. you know, we have to be, you know, the best mother, the best partner, the best wife uh, at work, you know, thrive at work. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot. 
it's it's definitely i mean i don't have children uh but i know from my mother from you know she was a nurse and she was working and she was primarily taking care of the house and she was ta- raising my my uh, my sister and i and uh, you know and i feel that even like 50 years after i still we still in the same um uh, questioning in the you know trying, know. you know it's like you know even if i have a career and she may not have had going to new york and traveling and breaking all this you know this molds at the same time the conversation we have today shows that you know we we back to this you know to the same how how i would say that to the questionings to the, the same issue to the same issues yes yeah it's it's still the same issues and even more um uh, uh, um important today because i feel the the covid-19 is crystallizing all this yes because there It, is not that fluidity and you know everybody was busy in and out of the house and uh, but now we are in the house and we have to focus even more you know uh, our issues and and yes. things we didn't resolve and we carrying with us and uh, and um, that we're struggling with it's bringing yeah. it all to the fore but you know what this is so int- this is i really i really believe this i i believe that the only way the only way that society changes is by people changing hmm. and we change society one person at a time so if people if women we're talking about women today if women really get in touch with themselves and really change their core self that has a ex exponential effect mm-hmm. a trickle down exponential effect it, it you know it just spreads and so the change comes it it always starts with the inside change always starts in here mm-hmm. and then it goes out mm-hmm. we put it out in the world mm-hmm. so 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 do you think it's more challenging because home is not a safe place at, as it was our physical home so do you think it makes it even harder to to work on the other home you know on 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 ourselves on our you know inner self yes do you it, think well that, it's it, you think that this feel, feeling of danger of being invaded is also you know Uh, touching us emotionally and psychologically. Yes, I think that's true. I think literally our homes have been invaded, right? Because now everything yeah. is happening there, right? It, you, you, it, it, exactly. It's become and like a everything prison. Everything that comes from outside is like, oh my God, you have to clean everything twice and, and make sure, you know, uh, you're doing it right. So it's, and your work is in here now and you know and you zoom in here you know with your colleagues and your fr- i mean everything is inside so so this danger we live in in and this threat i'm wondering if it's you know uh, makes it even harder to go inside you know, I- it definitely makes it harder there's there is always reality you know even without covid we're always dealing with realities we're always dealing with pressures and yes of course more it is more so now there's you know you're talking about the literal home <laughs> and what yes. i thought about is this home yes yes and i do think i i believe this if this home is in order mm. that home almost always will be in order mm. mm. you will deal at least with the danger and yes invasion and, and yes with- And so for instance say that you have a let's go with a couple and they had issues in their marriage and they worked it out they worked out the division of labor and you know and they and they worked out how to talk to one another about it and both were able to say you know I don't like this uh, this isn't working for me I need this that there's this ease between them and then covid hits of course there is pressure <laughs> Mm-hmm. and of course your your temper is going to be shorter there's so much more to do but now this couple has this foundation that they were able to attain mm-hmm. before covid hit they have this foundation to work from and so when the pressure comes it's not as intense it's you know they can work together 
So it's always about the inside first. I will never let go of that. I don't, I, it's always, mm -hmm. and there's always going to be external and it can be terrible external, you know? Mm -hmm. There's always going to be realities outside of ourselves that we have to deal with. This is life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how do we cope? And that's really, you know, at, at it, there's a few tenets, core tenets of psychotherapy. One of which is how do you live in reality? Mm -hmm. Because people always, um, shouldn't say always, people often, when they have not really figured themselves out, a typical issue for them is they always want to make it outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So if this person had not done that, or if, this, if they had not said that to me, I wouldn't feel this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If this circumstance had not happened, I wouldn't feel this way. It's, there's, there isn't a real self, uh, sense of agency there, a sense of control that you have real control mm -hmm. over your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is really a, a huge issue that I deal with in you know, working with people is how do you live in reality? That what's going on out here is not constantly shifting what's going on in here. And even more today. Even more today. Even that more you today. can yes. It's that you can hold your center in just about anything. Mm -hmm. Or if you lose your center, you get it back pretty quick. Because everyone loses their center. You know, that's what happens in an argument. <laughs> Two people have lost their centers and they've gone a little crazy, right? Hi Susan. <laughs> um and, you know, but then you know, so. <laughs> the fight is over and then they, mm -hmm. you know, they come back and they can talk about it. And, you know, so we all lose our center at times. It's, you know, this, we're humans. So let me see what we have. Um, we want to be liked. Um, more time for introspections. Defin definitely. Mm -hmm. um, if you're good with yourself, it's easier. It's what we've been talking. The, yes. And, you know, I think it would be, I'm thinking, yes, you know, I'm going back to the question about how, if you have so much going on, how do you take time for yourself? Mm -hmm. It is more intense now, of course. Yes. But that's always a question, isn't it? I think there is always something going on that can actually... Um, uh, push you to postpone to do the work you know i think mm -hmm. i think it's uh it's more now than ever but you will always find something oh you're too busy with your career or or you know um i don't know you just met somebody or you know so, uh, there is good on or not you know good or bad things but uh, i think there is always this uh this thing to to push it away and that yep. by the way when you do a psychoanalysis and and you have to mode was saying this and and we have to like you know uh, have this you know the the appointment with the doctor and our therapist and it's like we're always pushing it away we always have uh, um, excuses not to do it or uh, i don't have anything to say or or it seems that we, it's, it's really hard. I don't know if it's like an exercise. The more you do it, the more you go at it, the introspection. Uh, but, you know, how do you, how do you start? How, how, do you, how do you start practicing? I feel it me for yoga. The least I do yoga, the, the least I want to do yoga. The more I do yoga, and I've been doing much more because I have more time. And now my body, every other day, is asking for yoga is asking for, okay, uh, I want to do now yoga nidra, I'm doing yoga, I want to do meditation. So I'm wondering if there is not this also exercise that, that you have to start, even if it's not always pleasant at the beginning. Yeah, it's really hard, you know, I, you know, some people will start the therapy process and they won't stay. And I can never explain who will stay and who won't. I, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot as to who um, but if you stick with it, I agree with you, and you get to know yourself, mm -hmm. that, that's the core issue is that people don't want to really know themselves because we have good and bad. 
Uh, in, inside of us. And, and people don't want to sit with the bad. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And, and they, and they, people have a very hard time loving the bad parts of themselves, mm -hmm. which is necessary. You have to recognize yourself as human mm -hmm. and, and people, men and women have a very difficult time with this. Mm -hmm. It becomes very split. I'm either good or bad <laughs> instead of these really go together. Mm -hmm. So the more you do the work, the more you see that and the more you're, you're, you're ready to embrace it. Yes. It's, you know, the more is you do like, the work. Yeah. Is it like a practice? The more you do it, the, the, the best you, you get, you, you get to. Well, it, or... it, I think it's sitting with emotion is the primary issue is being able to sit with heavy, difficult emotion, mm -hmm. anxiety, anger, sadness, fear. I think the more that you're able to sit with the feelings that are inside of you, the easier it gets. Mm -hmm. And so another core tenet of psychotherapy is that it's basically a grief process. Mm -hmm. At its core, it is a grief process. Mm -hmm. I like when you talk about that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're having to grieve, um, you know, childhood uh, aspects of yourself that you had to shelve, you know, for your entire life. And then you realize, that, oh, my God, I haven't been functioning. I haven't been functioning from my core self, from my real self, mm -hmm. from who I really am. Mm -hmm. so it's, you know, change. Change isn't you becoming um, a completely different person. It's becoming the person you really are at your core. We all have a core self mm -hmm. that we develop, that we're born with. And then we, you know, we, we interact with our caretaker, with our mother usually. And whether that mother is supportive of your personality and who you really are or not determines whether your real self grows throughout life. Mm -hmm. For many people, this doesn't happen. And so they have this little tiny core self, this little seedling that hasn't been watered enough mm -hmm. to flourish. Mm -hmm. And so that's what people are doing when they embark on a psychotherapy process is they're, they're going in and they're accessing that seedling <laughs> and they're saying, you know, which is in the unconscious really. And what they're saying is I want to water myself now. I want to grow. Mm -hmm. I want to continue that growth that was stunted so long ago. So what the change really is, is coming completely into ourselves. Mm 